deeply beloved viewers. I woke up this morning thinking about Steve Bannon. What sort of brain invasion is that? Ooh, but couldn't ignore it. And I thought the gaze has moved away from Steve Bannon because he got the sack, although, of course, he's still speaking to Trump on the phone regularly. So let's just back up on Steve Bannon because he could well be one of the next indicted. Okay, so he was a founder of Breitbart. He's in bed with the Mercers. So all that disgusting alt-right stuff came from Steve Bannon, who then brought on Stephen Miller. Um, and of course, because he is in the pay of the Mercers, Cambridge Analytica responsible for that data manipulation that went on in the election and also in the UK in Brexit. So Steve Bannon was integral to the campaign during those mad halcyon days where they thought they were going to rule the world. So he was there. He has not gone away. I've read on him before. So I thought we need an update because he's turned up again in the context of the Stone indictments because someone from the campaign was the go-between for Stone going to WikiLeaks and the campaign. And the only person, well, two people above Steve Bannon was Trump himself and Don Jr. No, I'm wrong. Three, Kushner. So Bannon was the closest family member. He was on a par with Stone and was enormously influential. I'm talking in the past tense, but really he's still a player. And the fact he hasn't been indicted says one of two things. Either He's been talking to Muller anyway, and it's been kept on the down low, which is one of the questions we'll ask. Or he's about to be indicted because they've been fishing and circling around and around, and he's the next perch. So let's have a look generally. I'm using the Japaridze deck. So we'll see what comes up about Bannon generally, and then what's happening whether he's likely to be served an indictment. Oh, look, I've just got to give these cards a really good mix up. And a lot of people have asked about, yeah, whether Trump will go for the state of emergency. He'd love to, he's running out of diversions. But you'd have to think it's not going to fly. It's a slow motion, fake emergency, surely everyone realizes that. I'm sure the Dems have the paperwork ready to file. So about 35 minutes after he makes that announcement, if he does go ahead, it'll be slapped on some legal desk. So don't worry about that, I think. So let me concentrate. Steve Bannon. Very, very strange man. Steve Bannon. Have a look. Oh, well. Oh, Rebecca Mercer. Hi, how are you, doll? Oh, and the High Priestess. Weird, the female cards here. I get the feeling with Bannon generally, he's one of those old school misogynistic dickheads so he wouldn't be happy with this female energy whirling around his chart but we'll get there in a moment so first off justice so he's got to be concerned about what is happening in terms of the roger stone stuff right so the image in the Japarize deck, notice the yellow umbrella and the black umbrella. So on the one hand, holding off the rain, 
but the rain's been caught by the other umbrella. I kind of love that image. So he thinks he's been protected, but he's actually standing in it. Okay. Then he gets the Nine of Winds or Nine of Swords. Um, that's the hostage card. That's not good. It is not good. The only thing left being the privates. Everything else being thrown out the window. It's also a card of jail. Following that, we have the King of Winds or the King of Swords, which would be Muller. So Muller's turned up. Then, here we come, galloping in. So, the Queen of Gardens, which is the Queen of Pentacles, who has often, in all my early readings, this was Rebecca Mercer. Then it was other things and other situations for a few months. And now I've mentioned the Mercer name. She has turned up in Steve Bannon's reading beside Muller. Muller is looking very closely. That's another reading I must do. Are the Mercers as phenomenally wealthy? I mean, they make um, Trump look as like he's a small change guy, and in so many ways he is. They're serious billionaires and seriously powerful. So that's Muller looking at Bannon and Mercer. Next out, the High Priestess. The card of hidden agendas. You can see how it's a mysterious card. So the answer to the question if Muller is looking at Bannon is yes, 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 yes. But what will come of that? Okay, so let's dig in here. Will this translate into a court case for Steve Bannon. So, will he be actually indicted? We know from general uh, investigative journalism and stuff what a huge role he played. But don't you think everyone, everyone's sort of forgotten about him a bit? And he was seriously major player. Is Bannon going down? Is Bannon going down? Oh, Queen of Swords, Judge just returned to find the crossroads. Oh, I think he's been talking already. Okay, we have here the Queen of Cups. I think in... In a weird way, he's been trying, having just said he's an old school chauvinistic bastard, I think he's still old school enough. He, I think, has wanted on some level to protect Ivanka, not the brothers, but Ivanka. Ivanka is benefiting a lot from the gender paradigm in the sense that you know, everyone's going all out so Ivanka doesn't wear the orange jumpsuit, you know. But with the deals she's pulling in China and everything else, she is actively contravening her role in the White House. But Bannon actually has the dirt on Ivanka, and I think until now he's tried to protect her. But when the screws are tightened, he's the one who could have the dirt on her and you see the chalice spilling, overfilling with emotion. I think that's Ivanka. It could be Rebecca Mercer herself, but I don't think so. I'm getting the Ivanka vibe there. The Page of Cups. Now, Jester of Tides, it is in the Japarize deck. And it's a sad sort of figure sort of clown-like makeup, a bit sad, a bit more emotional. I think he has a history of alcoholism in the family. I've said this before. I don't know if he drinks now or not, or takes vast amounts of inappropriate drugs or not, but he sure used to. And I think that takes its toll. The feeling I'm getting 
from this when he was younger, this is a younger Bannon, he didn't know how to deal with all these emotions, so he suppressed them. And now, as an older man with his back against the wall, he's feeling it and doesn't know how to process it. He's at a crossroads right underneath the Ivanka card or possibly the Rebecca Mercer card. Will he or won't he? This is his dilemma, current. This is his current dilemma. It's like with the men, he's old school Navy SEAL or whatever he is. It's sort of, it doesn't matter so much what the men get up to, they can deal with it. But he's very self-conscious of holding the key to the Ivanka part of the story. And he's wondering what he should do or what he will do. He is very uncomfortable. He's got the magician card. So he he was actually one of the brightest in the campaign, even if his mind was used for, um, you know, conceiving really destructive, pointless, aggressive, nasty, ill-founded stuff, right? But he did have a good brain originally, but apparently those who have encountered him at close range, he's fixated. So he's read widely, he's really well informed, if you like that sort of right-wing view of history and everything. He knows of every battle, you know, um, since ancient Mesopotamia. But it's all this lopsided knowledge. And because a history of abuse, the brain is quite adult, right? So I'm going to get a clarifier on Bannon. I'm going to use the oracles. So Bannon, is he going to go down? The magician, the magician card. I want to know what's meant by the magician card. Obviously, on one level, the conjurer, he could get out unscathed. Has to be one interpretation. I'm not happy with that, but that might well be the result. Or he can judiciously give enough to get himself off the hook and still function, you know, still go on to get other work or something, or go to jail. So we want to know the magician. What about Banner, the magician? Oh, a bit sad. A bit sad. The worker without a job. Funny, I was just saying whether it'd still get work. No, I think what he has to do as the magician to get himself or keep himself out of jail. This is a sad figure. The figure has to make a decision he does not want to make, but it has to be done lonely. This guy is completely isolated. Steve Bannon, I would venture to say, doesn't have a friend in the world. It's kind of sad. However, I'm not doing sad on this channel in relation to these people who went out of their way to make massive sums of money out of the pain of ordinary working people. I'm sorry, that rules you out um, in my book, Call Me Old School. But this is a sad, isolated figure and the worker without a job. Interesting. Now, while I'm here, just briefly, I wanted to catch up on two other players in the Roger Stone saga. One is Jerome Corsi, who, who I've read on recently. I just want a quick update on that. And Randy Credice. I'm not sure, or Credico. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. Randy Credico, is that correct? Now, he was a comedian who was best friends with Stone, the New York player, 
and he interviewed Julian Assange and managed to make a connection between Stone and Julian Assange. Hmm. So I want to have a quick look at Jerome Corsi. Do you all remember who he is? So he was the guy who said, you know, I'll never speak to Muller. Doesn't matter if they hold my feet to the fire. And then five minutes later said, I'd tell them whatever they want to know. And gave a series of bizarre interviews. So many of these guys are, are disturbed. They're clinically disturbed. You know, and they end up with phenomenal wealth. So Jerome Corsi, very strange. Um... Personally, I think he's a powder puff and will tell Muller whatever he wants. But let's just have a little look at Jerome Corsi right now. Jerome. Oh, he gets the mighty bat. The wheel of fortune. Mm -hmm. uh, he is going to protect himself and his money if he can. He gets the Ace of Swords, um, the diamond with the bat. So it's like a new start is on the horizon. But you'd have to say the bat and the bat wings are providing, if you like, a silhouette. So it's a flawed start, like a flawed diamond. So that would be him responding to some sort of plea deal. And I suggest he's taken it. This, to me, new start says that's what he did. This is bigger than all of them. This is why I did the past life reading with Roger Stone. It, it's got a history. It's got a karmic history. This is the wheel of fortune for all these guys. And the deep irony, viewers, is that they've talked tough, right, for 40 years, 50 years in some cases, you know, all this El Capo mobster, you know, we are brothers in arms stuff. They all spill their guts on each other within a quarter of an hour because they're actually weak men. They're shallow men. They're dandies. They are not tough guys. Right? Stone put fear into other people because he's got a huge tattoo of Nixon on his back and I'm sure could do some nasty things. These are not tough. Cohen's not tough. He's been a bully. They've all been bullies. But they've actually got no conviction because they have no substance. No. Meanwhile, Jeremy Corsi is living in, you know, 1965. You know, we're talking living in the past. Ten of Gardens family money. So in order to preserve his own wealth, he was one of those guys, um, not InfoWars, that's Alex Jones, but he's a known conspiracy theorist. He's made a fortune and he wants to keep making money. That is his only criteria. So I think he's done a deal with Mola. So the other one, Randy Credico. 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 Okay, so this is the guy. The only reason we're looking at Randy, who the hell is Randy? I've got no idea, really. Um, is he actually went to the Ecuador embassy to speak with Assange. So did he carry a message from Stone or the campaign when he went? That's my only question about him. Okay, because he managed to get into the embassy to talk to Julian Assange himself who also is a very strange person and I would suggest has more than one syndrome going on. Yeah. So, Randy Credico, the comedian who interviewed Julian Assange. Julian Assange has no sense of humour. I can't imagine where the humour was. But let's see. The actual question is, did Randy carry a message from the Trump campaign? to Julian Assange. This is a key link in the chain. Okay, that's why we're looking at Randy. Did Randy take a message to Assange? Did Randy take a message to Assange? 
This is what brings the whole WikiLeaks story together. Did Randy carry a message? The Empress, Fertility and Ideas, Ace of Cards, Love did the deal with the Devil. Oh, couldn't be clearer. Oh, okay. Okay. The Empress. The Empress card. The Empress can be a particular woman and all of that and can talk about pregnancy and all of that. We're not dealing with that aspect of the empress we're dealing with the aspect of the empress which is more general and it's about fertility and it's about the promotion of ideas okay so they had this brainwave we can get this guy that the fbi won't be looking at because he's just a comedian to take a message to julian assange of wikileaks this was the genius idea right ace of pentacles We'll give him some money. Everyone will do anything for money, won't they? We'll just pay him. It'll be awesome. Mm-hmm. Oh, a quick digression here. Remember when um, all this started to come down this last week about poll manipulation to the, the campaign actually paid someone from a university to fiddle the online polls. And how did that get exposed? He was promised $50,000 and Cohen gave him 12. Isn't that typical? They rip each other off. Oh. Where do you start and stop with these hideous people? Okay, so back to Randy Crudico, who was bought to take a message to Julian Assange, because I have no doubt. Okay, here we have the love card. We're not talking about Randy's love life. We are talking about a deal with the devil. That would be Roger Stone. So Roger Stone could certainly take a part playing Lucifer in all this. And when you think of that Soviet megatroll was Guccifer 2.0, who Kushner and everyone dealt with, you know. Guccifer. Hmm. Okay. All right, guys. hope that means something to you all. Okay. Bye for now.